If someone were to ask you, Adam, is gold a better form of money or a better form of investment? I would say that gold is a monetary asset. Gold is not forced to be money anywhere right now, right? So uh, if we're sitting in Vancouver right now and I can make you take money for my coffee, you know, I, we, we, we there, you know, you have to use the Canadian dollar. Gold is money by choice, but it's money by choice all over the world, and it has a deep liquid market that's not subject to a particular country's policies. And for people in different countries where they're concerned about what's happening in the country, having access to something physical that is internationally valuable is uh, hugely protective, transformative. We are continuing our coverage at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference 2024. Joining me today is Adam Trexler, founder and president of Valorum, a very interesting company. Uh, physical gold bills, we'll be talking about why this is important and uh, why gold as an asset class is an important uh, thing to look at for investors. Ed, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, David. It's great to see you. You did your PhD in history of money. How did you transition from that world into what you're doing now? Great question. So I actually started my career in early stage venture financing for startups. Yes. And uh, I worked for a number of startups. You know, I'd get placed and then, you know, work for them yeah. and then get out. Yeah. I didn't like any of the deals. Okay. You know, they were just okay. Right. Uh, and I said, I don't want to do any of this. I'm going to go be an academic and teach. And I was really excited to teach. And uh, I did that for about 10 years. And um, I learned about the technology to deposit gold atom by atom onto a physical bill. And I said, this will be a revolution in monetary history. And I stopped my academic career and founded Valorum. Okay, but at some point you thought to yourself, gold is important for our monetary system, right? Uh, I thought that for a very long time right, because okay. it, uh, about, if I were this old, I would have thought it for 2,500 years. <laughs> uh, so gold has always been important and it's basically always been money. What's changed is whether or not paper money is exchangeable for gold. So today, we were just talking about this before we started, uh, the value of all coins and bars in the world is worth $3 trillion. Okay. The value of US paper money is worth $2.3 trillion. So gold is actually bigger than US paper money, physical gold. And what that tells us is that gold is this asset class that has a universal acceptability all over the world. Uh, most of it is moving towards Southeast Asia. Um, and it's a critical asset class that diversifies against whatever national currency you're in. What do you mean by universal acceptability? Can you expand on that? Yeah, so basically in almost any country in the world, yeah. there is a market for gold. Okay. So if I have a gold coin in my pocket, okay. I can find a price, I can find somebody to buy that coin anywhere in the world if they think that it's a, leg a legitimate coin. Because gold anywhere is recognized as a store of value. The issue with that system is that, A, it's not entirely liquid all the time and right. probably an inconvenience for some people, right? Can be, and it depends on the country as so well. It, so that, then that's where this comes in. That's the idea. So we're in our very early stages. Uh, we did make four million bills last year, but I still consider us in our early stages. We are making gold more accessible by providing gold in the units that people actually want between okay. a couple bucks and a couple hundred dollars. Okay, so here I've got, give us an example. You got a yeah. hundred orums, you call these orums? Oh, so it's a hundred milligrams of gold and that's why there's a hundred on there. Okay, and so how much is this worth, like, worth monetary value? So uh, we, that is about $6.50 worth of melt value sells 10 to $12, depending on the retail. So if I, if I go to a store and use this to purchase an item, would that be accepted? Probably not that bill, Okay. but we do make legal tender bills for countries. Okay. And uh, also there's a grassroots movement in the US to use some of our products to be able to buy and sell products. Can you, can you comment on uh, the currency you're making that's legal tender? Yeah, sure. So 
Um, we are a private mint. I think we are the outright international leader in private minting. So uh, most people or some of your viewers will be familiar that we, the US mint issues gold and silver coins in yes. addition to quarters and so on. Yes. Uh, similarly, the Royal Canadian Mint does the same. These are public mints. We're a private mint, so we will manufacture gold in this form four countries, and we've worked with seven countries so far. That number is expanding every year. If someone were to ask you, Adam, is gold a better form of money or a better form of investment, what would you say? Or better for money or better for an investment? I would say that gold is a monetary asset. Uh, and that sounds a little okay. hairy, so I want, I want to parse that. Yeah. Uh, gold is not forced to be money anywhere right now, right? So. Uh, if we're sitting in Vancouver right now, and I can make you take money for my coffee, you know, I, we, we, we there, you know, you have to use the Canadian dollar. Gold is money by choice, but it's money by choice all over the world, and it has a deep liquid market that's not subject to a particular country's policies. And for people in different countries where they're concerned about what's happening in the country, having access to something physical that is internationally valuable is uh, hugely protective, transformative. Okay. So let's take Turkey, for example. Right. They've been around 35, 45% inflation. Uh, paper US dollars are flowing into the country. Paper euros are flowing into the country. Gold even more so is flowing into the country. But gold doesn't have a good investment standard for the average person in Turkey. So people are losing their life savings if they hold it in Turkish currency. Yes. But if they are able to afford gold, they have something that can actually appreciate in value. If they're buying paper dollars, they're still paying five to 10% a year for the privilege of owning paper dollars. So most of your viewers, if they have, you know, they don't think of it as an asset, but most of them will be holding value in some way, whether it's jewelry, cash, uh, you know, antique cars. We all have value that we store and we're just kind of socking it away. Maybe it's Pokemon cards. Yeah, sure. uh, but gold has this almost unique capability to appreciate in value but also dependably maintain its value. And that's where it's important over the long term. The, the, the textbook definition of money is something yeah. that has a store of value, medium of exchange, a unit of account. First of all, do you agree right. with that definition? I do, I do. Okay. So, and that's why I say it's a monetary asset because gold has a problem right now. Gold is it, not universally accepted everywhere as a unit of account. Like if I go to the store, my bread isn't denominated in gold, right? That's true. And it's also difficult as a medium of exchange. And there's a lot of interesting companies trying to do something about yes. that. But what I think it's most interesting as is a store of value. Yes. So we're trying to make that store of value more and more accessible. Okay. And some people are really excited about gold as a medium of exchange. I think there's a clear message for billions of people that they should be owning more gold to hold on to value that it's a better way to store value. Okay. And we're trying to make that accessible to people. Which nations in the world do you think, you mentioned some countries that are suffering from hyperinflation. Yeah. Are those the places that would benefit the most from a product like this? I think so, I think so. But structurally, inflation is always a risk of any fiat currency. And we saw that you know, this year in the United States, uh, currencies gain and rise in value, yeah. and uh, there's no government in the world that has a perfect track record. Right. So we're all in these economies and subject to them. And the interesting thing about gold is it's one of the rare asset classes that you can own, and it has a value based on what's going on outside of what, what, what's very interesting to me when I was looking up at your website is you have on your on your website you have a, under the board of directors some very esteemed names. Tell us about some of the people involved in the company. Yeah, thanks. So um, 
One of the people on our board of advisors is uh, Steve Hankey. I think he's been yes. on your show before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Hankey is a fan favorite on my show. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's such a, a, a brilliant mind in currency. Uh, we also have Ed Moy. He's the former yes. director of the U.S. Mint. Uh, kind of a celebrity in the coin space, and he's very excited about what we're doing. Um, we recently added um, Carrie Corbin, uh, formerly of Delarue. She works on our anti-counterfeiting features. We want to have the most difficult to counterfeit monetary product in the world, and that's the trajectory for our company. How did you convince these people to join <laughs> your team? Um, it wasn't that hard because they see strategically how important gold is, the size of gold, which most people don't really understand the scale of gold, and where things are going. You know, people see, people who are insiders to the space see that gold at $2,000 an ounce is just not accessible to people. Gold at $5, and the point is not to have $5 of gold, the point is to accumulate regularly, the point is to have gold in units that you actually want. There's a problem with gold, we're fixing it. How do you, how would you, if, you, if this is something you're interested in doing, yeah. convince a retailer to say, look, this is something that we're trying to circulate, accept yeah. this for your products and your goods and services? Well, uh, the same way, in, same reason an investor would. It's, are you interested in having gold? Are, how confident are you, are, are you in your local currency? And is this something you would want to own? And if they want to own it, then they'll accept it. Okay, okay, very good. Tell us about your long-term vision for this company. So I think that there's a clear global need for uh, accessible gold. I think gold is gonna to continue to rise and it's gonna to continue to price out middle-class people. And we want to set the standard for how gold is held. So gold currently is held in good delivery bars and then coinage. I think both of those technologies are not good for individuals. So we want to provide the best anti-counterfeiting, the units that people want, and we think we'll convert billions and billions of dollars of gold into this form. Uh, just on your statement that gold will continue to go up, uh, can you walk us through your assumptions here? Yeah, gold is very slow to add supply. So, um, I believe it's like roughly the growth of the population globally every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, give or take. I yeah. mean, it's. Um, I wouldn't say that it's directly tied to population. Of course so not, yeah. that's where it is today. Yeah. But, you know, bringing a gold mine online takes years. Yes. Uh, there just isn't that much gold in the world, like in the Earth's crust. There's just a real limit to it. So it's very hard to just jack up the supply of it. Um, the need for gold is growing at a much faster rate. We live in a kind of a dangerous time. Uh, I think uh, you're seeing global fragmentation. I don't think that there's gonna be one world currency. I think uh, people are pulling away and wanting to have security. And in those times, gold has always been king. And so, you know, the ability of someone in, you know, Pick your region, you know, uh, South America and Argentina, in, in Turkey, um, in India, to have this asset, it's life or death. And we want to make it available to them. And so, you know, that's, that's the clear growth path for the company. Okay. Where can we learn more about your products in Valorum? Thanks, so uh, valorum.com, V-A-L-A-U-R-U-M.com is our website. And there's a lot of information on Last there. Last question for you. If sure the university ever came to you and said, Adam, we want you to come back and teach for us. <laughs> uh, what would you say? I would love to. My travel schedule is rather demanding. <laughs> so if I can do Zoom, I'm interested. What would you teach? Um, at this point, I think entrepreneurship. Interesting. You know, I've, had a, I've had such joy seeing something go from a, a rank invention to uh, a currency in seven countries to selling millions of units, to getting to work with the technology and, and really brilliant people. And um, I think 
we're in a, mom a moment where we need more technology in the world. You know what, let's, let's close on this. Okay. Advice for aspiring entrepreneurs who want to do this, or not just this company, you know, this kind of business, any kind of business. You yeah. came from the academic world, right. nothing to do with entrepreneurship. Right. You, know, you made this transition, you're successful, congratulations. Thank aspiring you. Aspiring entrepreneur, what would you say to him or her? Uh, pick your idea, be bloody minded, and just keep trying. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.